Hi, I'm Caitlin with Embroidery Library. Quilting is a classic craft with infinite design possibilities. You can mix and match color, theme, and pattern choices. Adding embroidery to quilts makes them even more interesting and fun. Today, I'll show you how to make this lap quilt. First, I'll embroider the blocks. Kona cotton fabric is a great choice for quilt making. It's a bit sturdier than most quilters cotton and works great for an embroidered quilt. I have also washed and dried the fabric to pre-shrink it. Using a quilting ruler and marking pen, draw a square onto the fabric. I want the blocks to be six inches by six inches when the quilt is assembled, so I'm drawing a square at six and a half inches by six and a half inches, which includes the seam allowance. Print a paper template of the design using embroidery software. Position the template inside the square. I'm centering the design side to side and top to bottom and allowing about one inch of space in between the outer edges of the design and the edges of the shape. Using an air erase pen, mark the center point and the axis lines. Hoop the fabric together with sheer mesh cutaway stabilizer by aligning the marks on the hoop with the marks on the fabric. This type of stabilizer works great with light to medium complexity designs, which are excellent choices for quilting, and keeps the quilt nice and light. Attach the hoop to the machine and load the design. Move the hoop so the needle is directly over the center point on the fabric. Embroider the design. I'm embroidering a light vintage stitch design onto the block. When the design is finished, unhoop the fabric. Mark the next block with a design template and hoop the fabric with sheer mesh cutaway stabilizer. Embroider the design. When the designs have finished, lay the fabric onto a cutting pad. Using a quilting ruler and rotary cutter, cut around the blocks. For this quilt, I embroidered 12 blocks. I'll also need 13 print cotton blocks. Mark and cut 13 six and a half inch by six and a half inch blocks. Now that my blocks are cut and ready, it's time to assemble the quilt. First, I will assemble the blocks row by row, starting with the block on the far left, align it on top of the block right next to it, right sides together, and pin in place along the left side. Sew a quarter inch seam along the pinned edge only. I'm using a walking foot attachment on the sewing machine. This type of foot moves the fabric along the top in sync with the feed dogs of the machine, keeping the layers aligned together. Next, press the back seam with a hot, dry iron. Do not use steam when pressing quilt projects as the steam can cause the fabric to shrink and distort. Next, align the blocks on top of the next block, right sides together, and pin along the left side. Sew a quarter inch seam along the pinned edge and then press the seam. Repeat this for each of the blocks in that row. Then, repeat for each row. After the rows are assembled, Align the top row on top of the second row, right sides together. Align the seams and pin in place along the top edge. Sew a quarter inch seam along the top edge only. Press the seam. Align the first rows on top of the next row, right sides together, pin in place, and sew a quarter inch seam along the pinned edge. Then press the seam. Repeat this for all the remaining rows. To add the borders, first measure the width of the quilt top along the top edge. Mine is 30 and 3 8 inches. This will be the length of the top and bottom borders. Also, decide how wide you would like the borders to be. I would like mine to be 3 inches wide after sewing, so I'm cutting the top and bottom borders to 4 and a quarter inch wide by 30 and 3 8 inches long. The additional 1 and a quarter inch is for the seam allowances. Align the borders along the top and bottom of the quilt top, right sides together, and pin in place. Sew a quarter inch seam along the pinned edges and press the seams. For the side borders, measure the side of the quilt front, including the top and bottom borders. Mine measures 37 and a half inches, so I'm cutting the side borders to four and a quarter inches wide by 37 and a half inches long. Align the borders with the sides of the quilt top, pin in place, sew a quarter inch seam along the pinned edges and press. Next, cut a piece of batting and the backing fabric a bit larger than the quilt top. Then, layer the quilt top, batting, and the quilt backing fabric together. Lay the quilt back fabric flat with the wrong side facing up. Place the batting on top of the backing, then lay the quilt top on the batting with the right side facing up. Pin the layers together. I'm using curved safety pins which work great for pinning through all the layers. Trim the batting and backing fabric. Use the outer edges of the quilt top as your guide. Next, quilt through all the layers. 
I'm using nylon monofilament thread in the needle and sewing thread in the bobbin. I also matched the bobbin thread to the same color as the backing fabric. I dropped the feed dogs of the machine and attached the free motion foot. Start in the center of the quilt and work your way outward to the edges. This will allow the quilt to lay flat without puckering or bunching. I'm adding double fold bias tape quilt binding to finish the edges of the quilt. Lay the quilt flat with the quilt top facing up. Unfold the bias tape, lay it flat with the wrong side facing up. Align the edge of the tape with the outer edge of the quilt and pin it in place. Sew a 3 quarter inch seam along the inner edge of the tape, leaving about 2 inches open at the start. Also, stop sewing 3 quarters of an inch before reaching each corner. Bring the tape up to form an angled fold. Then, fold the tape down and continue along the next edge. Pin in place and continue with the 3 quarter inch seam. When you reach the start, trim the tape leaving a couple inches of overlap. Fold the start of the tape over one half inch to the wrong side and tuck the end in. Sew in place. Next, fold the tape around the edges of the quilt to the back. Pin and hand sew the tape in place. You can also use your machine to sew the tape in place. And there you have it, a wonderful handmade quilt made even more fantastic with embroidery designs. Thanks for watching. To find more videos, machine embroidery designs, and tutorials, visit our website, www.emblibrary.com.